Hello everyone, this is uh, Shad Reis from Sky22 in Atlanta. I'm really privileged today to be with Dr. Khaldun Al-Aswad. He's director of the cath lab at Henry Ford in Detroit. Today he gave a phenomenal talk about uh, coronary calcification, the role of imaging and modification. Dr. Al-Aswad, always a pleasure to see you. A pleasure uh, being here. Thank you for uh, uh, inviting me to speak. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, tell us about challenging calcification in the coronary and what is your approach in these lesions? So uh, the most important thing is awareness, right? So most of the patient uh, will have calcification nowadays because complex coronary artery disease is becoming much, much more common nowadays. In fact, the less complex coronary artery disease after the ischemia trial and previously after the courage trial, the, hardly there is a, any indication unless it's acute coronary syndrome or um, uh, or a patient with low AF. So. Um, the calcium in the cath lab become a reality now, and we have to uh, develop the techniques and the skill set to first of all detect calcium, and second to uh, treat calcium. So first of all, uh, visualization by angiography is not adequate. Um, intravascular imaging is of paramount importance to uh, make sure that uh, you know and understand the anatomy of your coronary artery and the distribution of calcium. There are criteria, the thickness of the calcium uh, shelf, the length of the calcium sh uh, shelf, and um, the, uh, the, the arc of the calcium that gives you uh, uh, an idea if you need to do any ablative therapy. Now, a days we're fortunate to have multiple devices. We have the road ablation, we have orbital atherectomy, and we have shockwave. So we have all these devices. The problem with them, they are expensive. So you can use them indiscriminately and they have complications. So you have to have more information to know when to use these devices. And the most, and, 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 and calcium is associated with um, increased complication of your PCI, not only making your PCI harder to perform, it's also asso it making your PCI more high risk. And not just that, <coughs> you end up with suboptimal results because right. calcium is one of the, mo the main reason, the major reasons for stent under expansion. In addition to that, another reason for uh, uh, incomplete revascularization, both um, a minimum stent area, uh, which is suboptimal, uh, and uh, incomplete revascularization are associated with increased risk. Like the study from FUI included uh, more than 10,000 patients uh, and divided the patient between mild or no calcification to heavy calcification. Those who have heavy calcification continue to have increased uh, uh, MACE uh, even way after the procedure, which tells us we have to know how to treat this patient and we have to do something different about those patients. What's your approach for uh, bifurcation or multi -visual? Do you stage? Do you... Um avoid doing multi visual in one sitting? So I normally prefer, and according to the SKY recommendation, not to perform ad hoc PCI. So I perform a PCI for a target vessel for patient who presented acutely, and I'll stage the rest of the procedures if I can. And that's actually all good policy. It decreases operator fatigue, patient fatigue, uh, radiation exposure, and contrast exposure, right? And it's always you come up with better idea if you review your films in your office as opposed to you standing in the cath lab at one o'clock at, at night and looking at the, at, at, the, at the images. So I prefer to stage. Now bifurcation, you have to finish bifurcation in, in, a, in the same procedure. Now bifurcation, I don't see any way of performing uh, a good bifurcation outcome without physiology and imaging study. Uh, imaging study could actually um, uh, 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 negate the, the need for physiology, but I always uh, perform imaging guided bifurcation study, uh, and bifurcation stenting, and uh, according to the imaging, I'll, just, I'll find out if I need to do um, ablation of the calcium in the main vessel, in the side branch, or if I don't need to do any of that, and actually the, the, the disease extension in the side branch and the angulation, which is you can glean angiographically, but also when you look with, uh, with, uh, with ultrasound, uh, with the IVIS, you can figure out if there are the involvement of the plaque. That has not been studied, but actually helps me in my own practice to understand the anatomy of the vessel and to find out uh, if I need two-stent strategy 
or Singleton strategy. Last question about imaging. Not every lab have OCT. A lot of the labs have only IVIS. Are you dependent on IVIS and IVIS is enough or you have to have OCT? I think at this stage of the, of the development, I think uh, either or, if you have this or have uh, don't have that, more important to use it, right? More important to know how to interpret the results and to use it. Uh, now, are we going to reach a stage where we need both? In my opinion, if you have a lot of patient with renal failure and we still cannot perform a good OCT with saline injection, you have to have an IVIS. Um, I am heavily um, uh, dependent on IVIS. 100% um, of my patient, uh, almost 100% of my patient, receive IVIS-guided PCI regardless of the lesion, even less complex le uh, lesion. In our cath lab at Henry Ford Hospital, we are 89% of the time, every PCI has, 89% uh, of the PCIs are IVIS guided. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, thank you so much, Dr. Alas, for, for the, enlightening us about the calcification management and especially in patients who are yeah. aging and also coming to the cath lab with severe calcification. Yeah. Please watch this video and others on Sky TV. This is Shad Reyes from Sky 22 from Atlanta. Thank you, Dr. Alas. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>